science explorers. It's Carrie here from Ghost STEM. Well, Sharon and Dean DeFries really seem to enjoy their life on the ranch. And I thought it was really cool how they combined raising cattle and raising timber all in the same place. And one thing I noticed as I was watching their video is that they pay very close attention to the trees on their ranch. And so I thought for this discovery challenge, we would do the same. We're gonna pay really close attention to a nearby tree. So the supplies you'll need for this discovery challenge include just a couple of pieces of paper, a pencil, maybe some other art materials like colored pencils, crayons, markers, a clipboard will be useful. And then you'll also, if you have something like a measuring tape around, that could be useful. But if you don't have a measuring tape or maybe a, a yardstick or something, um, I've got some options for you. We're gonna play around with using our body as, as measuring tools. All right, so go ahead and gather your supplies and then we'll get started. All right, let's begin the discovery challenge by simply wherever you are, start thinking about a nearby tree. And it could be something in your yard or your schoolyard. And there is a chance if you're in Eastern Oregon <laughs> that there aren't any trees around. So if that's the case, maybe consider a shrub or maybe looking at a picture of a tree could work too. So just imagining in your mind's eye, this tree that's nearby. And as you think about that tree, I want you to think about what's its overall shape. And then how do the branches come off of the tree? And I also want you to consider maybe what the texture of the trunk is, what the texture of the bark is. And then lastly, what are the leaves like or what are the needles like? What shape are they? So after thinking, kind of conjuring up in your mind what the tree looks like, now I want you to take some time to draw. Draw from your memory what the tree looks like and take some time and feel free to go ahead and pause the video now to do that. All right, so now that you've drawn your tree from memory, now you're gonna go outside if possible. You could also look outside the window if it's not possible to head outside. But, but if you can, head outside and you're going to draw the tree again on that second piece of paper and you're going to focus on those four things again. You're going to focus on looking at the overall shape of the tree. How is it shaped? And then how do the branches come off of the tree? and then draw what the texture as best you can. It doesn't have to be great artwork. And then consider drawing the leaves or the needles. What shape are they? And don't, don't be afraid of adding in lots of detail. So go ahead again, feel free to pause the video and head outside and focus on those four aspects of your tree. All right, so now that you're back, you've drawn your tree two times. I want you to have those two drawings right next to each other and compare them. Maybe observe what is similar between the two trees and then what's different between the two trees. Are there details that you added on the second drawing that you didn't have on the first drawing? Or maybe what stayed the same between the two drawings? And my hope is that you have a chance to share your drawings with someone else, maybe a classmate or a family member. At the DeFries Ranch, Sharon and Dean look for trees with really straight trunks and with a large circumference. And a circumference is the distance around the trunk of the tree or how big around the tree trunk is. So to see if the trees are ready for harvest, people who are foresters like the DeFries, they need to measure the circumference and the height. And so that's what we're going to do now with your tree nearby. Here is the tree that I'm going to be measuring. 
its circumference and height. Just thought I would give you a larger perspective. It's gonna look a lot bigger on this video than it actually is. All right, so we're gonna first start out by measuring the circumference of our trees. So I'm gonna show you how first. So I'm gonna start out by sharing with you how to do it without a tape measure. The one thing you're gonna to have to know is how tall you are because did you know that the length of your arm span from fingertip to fingertip is roughly the same length as your height. So I am five foot four inches. And if we were to convert that into metric, which I always prefer to do, is I'm 162 centimeters tall. So that means I can say that roughly from fingertip to fingertip, I am 162 centimeters long. So I can use that to measure the circumference of the tree. So here I go. And so if I have a little bit of overlap, I'm going to kind of estimate how much overlap that is and subtract from my height from the 162 centimeters. So here I go. I'm going to stand at the base of the tree and wrap my arms around. And I am, I have a, overlapping my fingers by about this much. All right, so I'm going to estimate that that amount of um, length of my fingers is about 20 centimeters. So I'm going to take 162 centimeters from fingertip to fingertip and subtract 20. So 162 minus 20 is 142. So I'm going to say that the circumference of this tree is 142 centimeters. Now let's test that. And I have my tape measure. And we'll see, I'm gonna do the same. Wrap around and measure it. So the tape measure shows that it's 132 centimeters. So my estimate with my arms was 10 centimeters off. Now 10 centimeters might sound like a lot, but really 10 centimeters is only that much. That's not very much. So I think that's pretty good for not having anything but my arms and, and the knowledge that I'm 162 centimeters. So there we have it. I've got the circumference of my tree that I got to know through drawing it. Now I have some data around it. I have the circumference of my tree, 132 centimeters. All right, now we get to measure the height of your tree. And in order to do so, we have to go upside down. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it. <laughs> so over time, scientists have invented special tools to help measure the height of trees. And one of those tools is called a theolodite. And the illustration shows a surveyor using one. So we don't have any special tools. We just have our bodies today. And we're gonna use a special technique to measure the tree height. And one really interesting way to do that is to bend over and walk away from the tree. Actually, walk away from the tree first. <laughs> you walk away from the tree first, and when you're far enough away, you look underneath your legs and see if you can see the top of the tree. If you can't, you walk a little bit farther. Now, once you hit that spot where bent over between your legs, you look up and you can see the top of the tree, then you know that that angle that you are at is about 45 degrees. And also because the trunk of the tree makes about a 90 degree angle with the ground, we know mathematicians know that this forms a kind of triangle with a 90 degree angle and a 45 degree angle. And when that happens, we know that the two sides of the triangle are equal. So the sides of our triangle in this situation, one side is the tree and one side is the ground, the distance away from the tree where you're standing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk away from the tree, bend over once we can see the top of the tree, then we're gonna measure the distance on the ground from where we stopped all the way to the trunk of the tree. 
All right, so this should be kind of fun. I'm gonna demonstrate it. So here I go. I'm gonna start walking away and we'll see what I can find. So here we go. Need to go a little bit farther. Whoop, there's a ditch there. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna look up. Not quite. Then I'm gonna stop here. How about here? I'm gonna bend over. And find oh there there we go so i'm at one side of the triangle the top of the tree is the other side of the triangle so i need to find the distance from where i am to the trunk of the tree so i'm going to use my arm span to do that so it's not going to be super accurate but it's the best i can do right now so i'm going to take my one hand put it where I was standing and then make an arm span here. So I'm going to count how many arm spans I, I from the tree. So I'm going so to kind of walk around my fingertips. So I'm going to keep this hand here. So this is two arm spans right here. And then there's three arm spans. And then four. And five. I'm getting into the weeds here, folks. <laughs> and then six. That's seven. And I can't reach it, but I'm gonna say that is eight. If I could touch it, we'd be at eight arm spans. So with that, let's take a moment for you to pause the video and you go do the same, measure your tree, and then we'll come back. Pretty cool, huh? Just imagine, what else can we measure with our bodies? That's why the foot is called a foot. Who knew? Probably some of you did. For our discovery challenge purposes, we're actually going to leave our measurements as arm spans or steps, whatever you used. Using your number of arm spans or steps, using your body as a measurement is a simple yet really innovative and useful way to measure distance. So how did people measure things before they were rulers and tape measures? They probably used their body. So if you are interested, however, in converting your number of arm spans or steps to something like meters, how might you go about doing that? Perhaps talk with some fellow students, maybe talk with your teacher or a parent to work through what might it look like to convert your body measurements into standard measurements. All right, and then let's pause. Let's just go back for a second. I'm going to move my head here. Do you remember why we measured the distance from the tree to where we could see the top of the tree looking between our legs there? What were we trying to do? Ah, the height. We're really looking for the height of our tree. And why is it that when we look in between our legs like that, we might figure out approximately how tall the tree is. Uh, it's all geometry or triangles. All right, I'm gonna move my head again. So the length of these sides, this side here, and this side here of the triangle are approximately equal. And that's because this angle that the tree makes with the ground is 90 degrees, a right angle. And then this angle here is about 45 degrees, and this angle is about 45 degrees also. So because of that, the length of these sides are equal. So we measured the distance away from the tree because that distance is about the same distance as the height of the tree. So in my case, the height of my tree, the height of my tree right here, was about eight of my arm spans tall because that's about how far away I was when I could see the top of the tree while looking in between my legs. All right, through this discovery challenge, you have learned a whole lot about one tree. It's pretty neat. 
Now, I want you to be sure to take some time to share your drawings, your circumference, the height of your tree with others. And I also want you to reflect on, gosh, if you could ask Sharon or Dean DeFries a question about their ranch, what would you ask them? And I also am curious for you to consider, were you surprised by anything about this tree that's nearby that you see all the time? Was there anything about the tree that surprised you? All right, well, great job with this discovery challenge, tall, tall tree, and um, keep exploring and we'll see you next time. Take care.